there, Miss Barlow? Puffy? Hello, Hal. How's it coming? Okay. We ought to have them all out by the end of the week. Good. Take all the big stuff from this mark clear through to Mahaffey Pass. Yes. That ought to give us a good month if somebody doesn't snake it all away from us. If somebody don't. Well, all we can do is hope. Come on, Puffy. you cut yourself. We're not. Never have yet. Go on. Clear out. Hey, Norton. At it again, eh? Hello, Freddy. What do you want now? That goes for you too, Bart Norton. Clear out of here. Get off my place. Ah, oh, stop your kidding. You know this ain't your land. It is too. Always has been. Always will be. Going to chase everyone out of my beautiful woods. Elsie Barlow too? Certainly I am. Always intended to. Put her uncle off too when he comes. Her uncle? Yes. Don't think I don't know about him. Think she's coming from England to run this place. I'll show him where he gets off. <laughs> Freddy knows how to handle him. Well, more power to you. Come on, move on. Now, clear off. I want you all out of here in five minutes. If not, I'll put you off. Why, I'll slap you loose from your spine. Try it. Go on, try it. Take it easy, Freddy. Go on, now, get out of here. All right, all right. I'm going to kill that nut one of these days. Yeah, if he don't get you first, he knows how to handle that knife. I'd leave him alone, Bart. Yeah, you never can tell about those guys. Come on, you fellas, get back to work. We've wasted enough time today. Get going! Puppy! Puppy, come here! Look at that. But they made our legs. I'll say they're not. They look like the Norton Bunch to me. Hey, you! What are you doing on my property? Bart! Bart! Here comes Elsie Barlow. You fellas get under cover so they won't recognize us. I know how to fix her. Go all the way to Portage Point, Miss Elsie. I'm all wet. I'll catch me death in pneumonia. Dr. Reading said I was a perfect subject for pneumonia. This uh, is very important, Puffy. His boat got in today. Right, oh. The pneumonia is a serious thing. Hi there, Elsie. Look like you're in a hurry. I am. I'm on my way to phone the police. The police? What's the matter? If you can't keep your men off my property, Al Norton, I'll get someone who can. Our men? What did they be doing on your property? Stealing my timber, the same as you've been doing all year. Oh, don't talk like that. You know, we wouldn't do that. I'm sure you wouldn't. Come on now. Why don't you sell out to us? I've told you a dozen times I won't sell. And now I won't have to. Oh, how's that? My uncle will be here in a few days, and he'll see about it. Your bit. uncle? This is no place for an old man. Why don't you get a live wire around here? Like you, for instance? You took the words out of my mouth. Ugh. You and me could go places. Come on now, break down and be nice. You know how I feel about you. And you know how I feel about you. I'm so glad you're back. We've got company. Who is it, Maggie? Is it Uncle? I don't know. I've never seen your uncle. Tell me, do I look all right? Oh, yeah, you look just the same as always. <laughs> don't mention it. Miss Elsie Barlow? <laughs> yes, of course, silly. Oh, Uncle, I'm so glad you're here. Where is Aunt Martha? I'm sorry, Miss, but I'm Gordon Hayes of the Larrymore Lumber Company. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I, I was expecting my uncle, you see, and I thought, well, won't you sit down, Mr... Hayes. Uh, uh, Gordon Hayes. Miss Barlow, we're buying up timber holdings, and I thought you might be interested in an offer. I'm afraid not. Frankly, I know you haven't been doing too well up here. 
And maybe if we made you an attractive offer... I'm sorry, Mr. Hayes. As a matter of fact, I'm not in a position to sell. Why not, may I ask? Well, my uncle, the man I mistook you for, is coming from England to help run the place. He's really part owner. Then as soon as he arrives, I wish you'd talk it over with him. He might be interested. I'd be glad to. I'll get the Neopath in for a few days. And if you should change your mind, you can call me there. Thank you. Sorry to have been a disappointment, but good day. Good day. Maggie. Oh, never mind. Thank you. I'll find my own well. That was a disappointment. Oh, cheer up, Miss. Maybe when your uncle does turn up, you'll prove a worse disappointment. You must always look on the bright side. <laughs> a fine lookout you made. Elsie nailed us red-handed. Oh, I couldn't help it. Can't be in every place at once. Caught up with her later and tried to get her to sell. Yeah, but did you do any good? No, not a chance. Tell her uncle coming up to take over the property. Yeah, just heard about it. Old Freddy's been popping off. How did he know? That Timberette's got his ear to the ground and knows everything. Oh. Well, if uncle moves in, it means we move out. So, it's up to us to see that uncle doesn't move in. Hello, Stafford. Hello, Bob. Them horseshoes are ready for you. All right, I'll pick them up tomorrow. Okay, good night. Good night. Oh, let's have a drink. Hi, fellas. Hi, Norton. Hello. Hey, where's Harry? Go now. They'll be back in a minute. Oh, I guess I can wait a while. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Freddy! Will you stop whittling those shavings all over my lobby? Shavings come from trees, and trees are beautiful. Anyway, the trees are mine. Well, King, we got this far anyway. Let's get some more directions in here. What about a little dinner, boy? Come on. I beg your pardon. Can you tell me how to get to the Barlows? Why, sure. Take the first turn to your right. First turn. Keep straight on for a couple of miles. And it's the first place you come to. Thank you. Am I too late for dinner? Well, the dining room's closed, but uh, I think I can fix you up something. That'll be fine. Uh, it's this way, and I'll turn on the lights. Thank you. Come on, boy. Are you interested in the bar? No, thank you. Make yourself home. I'll call you. Thank you very much. So you think you're going to run the parlor land? What? Yes, what about it? Plenty. That land's mine. Yours? Yes, the land's always been mine, always will be. I don't want a single piece of timber cut. May I inquire just who you are? Never you mind who I am. I don't want one of those lovely trees cut down. And if you try now it, Now, look I... here. I don't know who you are, and I care less. Ah, uh, you don't care. Nobody cares. Only I care. Well, let me tell you, you'll never live to cut down one of my beautiful trees. Freddy, how about enough of you? Get out of here. Well, I'm warning you. You'll never live to cut down one of my trees. <laughs> Don't think I'm afraid of your dog, either. Get out of here! I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Oh, well, that's all right. Come on, King. It's just possible we might use Freddy in our business, hmm? Yeah. We might even make him a partner. Who is he? Oh, he's an old crank that thinks all these lands are his and that... Trees are too noble to be cut, you know, a little on the squirrely side. What does he do? Oh, our jobs. Lives in an old shack. Spends his time hunting and fishing. Pretty good man with a gun. Plenty of game around here. Is there enough around here for my dinner? Plenty. Yes, come along. <laughs> I think I'd like some soup. Some soup, yes. And uh, then I want two steaks. Two steaks? Yes, one medium rare and the other ground up for the dog. Mm, for the dog. What's his name? King. I'll take him out and feed him in the kitchen if you don't mind. That'll be fine. Go on, King. Come on, King. Oh, sorry, boys. Just stepped out for a minute. What's it to be? It'll be a little scotch. Just to be different. Give me a slug of Irish. Got any Irish whiskey, Harry? Oh, I don't get much call for that. I got a bottle, but it's downstairs. Hold me a minute.
do get an idea once in a while, don't you? Once in a while, yeah. Let's go. I say, what have we here? Hello, Griff. What have we here? Oh, he belongs to a fellow inside. Ain't she a beauty, though? Reminds me of me first missus. Oh, blimey. If I ain't half as fast as that, I'd have to stiff up all night with me bicarbonate. What with me gallstones being as big as boulders? If it was me, they'd be ordering shrouds. Yeah, now you're fed, you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Just like people eat and run. Tell a fellow that owns him was asking how to get to your place. Oh, who is he? I don't know, but he wanted to know the way to Alcibala's. Get a constable. Right, I'd better call Miss Elsie. Oh, this is frightful. Don't ask me. I don't know what he's got. I'll tell you in a minute. What's, hello, hello. What's, what's all the excitement? The man, the man in the dining room. He's Miss Elsie's uncle. He's been killed, murdered. Hello, no. hello. Murdered? Who did it? I don't know. It's horrible. That's what. Who was around here when it happened? Well, nobody was in the bar but the Nortons. I went downstairs to get a bottle. When I came back, they'd left. You don't think that. The... Hello. Well, it's about time, Mr. Smiley. Where were you? Oh, I get it. Well, get me Miss Elsie Barlow and make it snappy. It's a matter of life and death, mostly death. What did you say? Let's see, Freddy was here and the Nortons and early in that Mr. Hayes, that lumberman. And you. Hello. Miss Elsie, it's Puffet speaking. How do you know it's my uncle? I don't say it is Miss Elsie and I don't say it ain't. I'm only afraid it might be. He was asking after you and Griff said he was English. From the look of him, I'd say he was a gentleman. It's the past tense was a gentleman. He's dead. But don't you let it excite you. Well, wait there. I'll be right down. Maggie! Maggie! Broke it to her easy like, don't you think? You broke it easy. What do you mean by saying that I was here? Here, yeah, half a mouth. What's the matter with well, you? Get the idea. I didn't mean anything. Well, get it out of here. Yeah, come off it. What do you mean? Uh, well, you bad of it. I never said anything too. about you at all. When you came in, you found him like this? Yes. Well, what did you say the dog's name was? The, the man called him Keen. Keep your eye on that door, Harry. Hello, Mackenzie. I'm glad you're here, Sergeant. I couldn't get here any quicker. What have you found out? Nothing more than I told you on the phone, uh, except the dog's name is Keen. Mm -hmm. And I found this telegram in his side coat pocket. Quiet, boy, quiet. We know how you feel. Dog might be able to help us. Find the knife? No, Sergeant. Ken. Oh, Ken, Puffy phoned me about my uncle. What is it? Well, we hardly know yet, Elfie. I'm glad you're here, though. I want you to identify him. Oh, then it's true. <laughs> oh, there, there, dear. I hate to have to ask this, Elsie, but... Mackenzie, was that man your uncle? Oh, I don't know, Ken. I, I've never seen him. I'm afraid I can't be very much help to you. Oh, Griffin, wasn't there any luggage or papers or anything else that might identify him? No, no. But it, it's strange now, I think about, about it, he, he didn't even have a saddle bag on there. Horse he came on was rented from Hawkins of Portage Point. I noticed that particularly when I came to get here. 
only real clue we've got is this wire. Oh, Elsie, did you send that telegram to your uncle? Yes, yes. Puffy took it. That's right. I took it myself to Portage Point a couple of days ago. It came right in the middle of me arthritis. Didn't he have any money on him? No, not a cent. Then there's your motive, Sergeant. Whoever done him in took his poke. Now I'm sure it was murder. Uh, Elsie, are you sure that man's your uncle? It must have been with this wire being found on him. But, but I had understood Aunt Martha was coming. Well, what made you think that? Well, his letters inferred that she would. Well, that gives me something to work on. I'll check the steamship company. Oh, Grit, is there anything more you can tell me? Nothing more. I haven't told you already. Well, now, wait. Let's go back. At the time the murder was committed, you were out back feeding the dog. What happened between that time and the time Mr... Mr. Barlow came into the dining room? Well, old Freddy came in and he heard him ask the way to Miss Barlow's and he started his usual beef about cutting down his timber, you know, like he always does. And I came out from the dining room and chased him out. Yes, I know, Griff, but was there anybody else in here? Well, the two Norton boys were in. They went into the bar and uh, Mr. Hayes, of the, he, he was sitting in the lobby. Now, who's Mr. Hayes? Mr. Gordon Hayes of the Lorimer Lumber Company. He's the man who called on me about buying my place. If you'll pardon me, I'd like to identify myself, Sergeant. I'm Gordon Hayes. Mm. Do you know what's happened here, Mr. Hayes? Yes. The bartender just told me, so I came in to report to you. I know how you must have a checkup of everybody's movements and uh, alibis. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Suppose you tell me what you know. Gladly. The, uh, the dead man was having an altercation with the old crackpot. You mean old Freddy? Yes. I was sitting in the lobby. Then I went for a walk. That was at exactly five minutes past eight. Well, what makes you so sure of the time? I looked at my watch when I crossed the veranda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hayes. Uh, Griffin, you tell me the, the stranger arrived at exactly 8.10, is that right? I'm positive. By the clock in the lobby. By the stranger, you mean Mr. Barlow? How do you know that man's Mr. Barlow? Why, Miss Barlow told me she was expecting her uncle. When he asked for her, well, I naturally supposed it was he. What time does your watch say now? 9.47. And the clock in the lobby reads 9.58. Uh, Mr. Hayes, uh, did anybody see you when you went on this little walk tonight? No, I don't suppose so. I wandered about by myself. That'll be all. Thank you very much. If you want me, I'll be in my room. Puffy, will you take Elsie and Maggie home? I'll be back later. All right, Ken. Hey, Mac, uh, go down and get Langley to come up with his camera. We'll take some photographs. I'll wait here for the coroner. Right. Poor old boy. You feel pretty tough, don't you, son? You feel pretty tough. Kind of a tough payroll this month, Bart. Yeah, I know. But it paid for itself, all right, thanks to the Barlows. Oh, that ain't enough. We gotta have more timber. Not enough here to last a couple of months. Look. Yeah, I know. But we gotta be grateful for the little extra money we picked up from the Barlows. You ain't got no patience. That's the trouble with you. Oh, I like to see things move. Yeah, I know. But there's no sense running our head into a noose. We've got to be careful for a while, out of respect for dear old uncle. <laughs> uncle? Oh, yes, I forgot. Old uncle. <laughs> They're growing big white daisies. They're growing big white daisies. Growing big white daisies when they come. Well, 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 if it's not little Red Riding Hood himself and the wolf. I want to know what time you fellows left the inn last night. What do you want to know for? The man was murdered. Either while he was there or just after you left. Well, what do you know about that? That's what I'm asking you. Well, it's like this. You ain't telling us anything. Oh, you know all about it. Sure. Everybody in town knows about it. And I'll tell you something you don't know. The time the guy was killed, we was outside talking to Stafford. We can prove it. So what? Seems you went to an awful lot of trouble. Now, listen. You make a crack about us having killed him, or I'll knock your block off. Cop or no cop! <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Keep that dog down. Keep him down, Charlie. I'll give him this. Put that knife away or I might let him have you. There'll be an inquest at 10. You boys be there and don't try leaving town. We don't have to. Come on, boy. Hey, you think we ought to tell him? Tell him? Tell him nothing. Tell that guy nothing. Uh, Griffin, what do you know about this fellow Hayes? Nothing, except that yesterday he said something about staying a few days. Late last night, he put in a call to Vancouver. Last year. I beg your pardon, but can you tell me the way to Miss Elsie Barlow's? Uh, yes, but would you mind telling me who you are? I'm Herbert Barlow. You're Herbert Barlow? Yes, and this is Mrs. Barlow. Well, I'm going to have to ask you to identify yourself. <laughs> I realize it's very unusual, but of course, here's my passport. And Mrs. Barlow's. May I ask the reason for all this? Oh, thank you. Mr. Barlow, would you mind stepping over here a moment, please? Excuse me. This is all very regular. Would you mind telling me what it's all about? This is a photograph of a man who was killed here last night. I wonder if you can tell me who it is. Of course it's. Bob Druid, my secretary. How did this happen? He was murdered, stabbed. Herbert, there's something wrong. What is it? It's Bob Druid. He was killed here last night. Robbery seems to be the obvious motive. I wonder if you could tell me if he had any money on him. We had a little, not very much. Why should anybody want to kill Bob? He had no enemies that I know of. Oh, please, dear. You see, He'd been with us so long, he was like one of the family. Herbert, this is awful. Can you tell me how he happened to come on ahead of you? Yes, I had a frantic wire from my niece, asking me not to stay over in Vancouver, but hurry on here. Mrs. Barlow didn't take the trip very well, and I was afraid she wouldn't be up to it. So I sent Druid on ahead to see what was up. I see. Well, what do you intend doing about the body? Are you going to ship it back to England? Oh, I don't think that will be necessary. He had no family. Can't we get out to Elsie's? Well, I'll be glad to take you. We can settle all the details later, Mr. Barlow. Uh, shall we get started? Hello, King boy. Nice, good old boy. Sergeant. Oh, uh, pardon me, Mr. Barlow. What'd you find out, Mac? I just got an answer from the French line. We had it figured wrong, Mackenzie. The dead man's name was Robert Druid. It was? That's Mr. and Mrs. Barlow over there. Takes on a new twist, eh? Come on. Uh, Mr. Barlow, Mrs. Barlow, I'd like you to meet Dan Mackenzie, one of our men. I'm sorry that we meet under these circumstances. Yes, it's frightful. Uh, Mr. Barlow, I'd like to ask you a favor. We'd like to keep the dog for a few days because we believe he can help us. Well, of course, if you think he can help. We'll miss him. I know you'll take good care of him. No, you needn't worry about that, sir. We've become attached to him already. Well, thank you very much. Come on, King. Well, he seems to approve, eh? We'll get along all right, won't we, boy? Your luggage comes sooner than expected, Mr. Barlow. Sometimes you have to wait days. Oh, but I'm glad it came before my rheumatism set in. Well, I'll put these upstairs to unpack them for you, sir. Thank you, Prophet. On the way back, bring me some matches, will you? Very good, sir. Sergeant. This is a terrible affair. Please don't hesitate to call on me if there's anything I can do. Oh, thank you. Here you are, sir. You know, I I'm still not satisfied that robbery was the motive. Begging your pardon, sir. I thought I settled all that. The bloke what took the wallet done it. As the French say, chasse le wallet, and you've got your man. I don't agree with you, Puppet. Few people will take the risk like that. For striking a man down in the dining room of a public place, merely to rob him of a few pennies, it isn't reasonable. I agree with Mr. Barlow, puppy. Whoever killed Bob Druid had a stronger motive than theft. They took the money merely to conceal a real motive. Now, the inquest didn't prove a thing. We've got three suspects, nothing tangible. We can't prove anything on Hayes, and we couldn't get anything worthwhile out of the Norton boys. As for old Freddy, <laughs> frankly, I don't know. But the testimony proved that he argued with Bob. 
shortly before the murder was committed. Yeah, but he's mentally unbalanced. Eh? I'm sure we can eliminate him. I say, Sergeant, is there anything in this theory? Might it have been a case of mistaken identity? You mean the murderer mistook Bob Druid for you? Exactly. Could it have been my life they were after? After all, the rest of you made that mistake, you know. Why, Mr. Barlow, who'd want to try and do you in? Would it be against anyone's interest for me to take over the Barlow lands? Well, for the Nortons it would. It most certainly would. They've been stealing Miss Elsie's timber ever since her daddy died. And nothing's been done to put an end to it. Well, you can't prove that, Puffy. They've operated so cleverly that we can't pin a thing on them. Well, they're always trying to make Miss Elsie sell out to them. And a fine bill can they have given her. <laughs> Don't you worry, Puffy. We're not selling out to anyone, now that Uncle Herbert is here to help. Good girl, the old Barlow spirit, eh? <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, Uncle. Funny, Ken, everyone wanting me to sell out. I wouldn't anyway without consulting Uncle. After all, he's part owner, aren't you? We won't have to sell, Elsie, dear. We'll have this place humming along on a profit in no time. Maybe you will, if you hang the Nortons. Well, you can't hang people simply because you don't like them. I could. <laughs> don't forget, Puffy, you were at the scene of the crime. Hey? You wouldn't want to be hanged for just being there, would you? Oh. Oh. oh I'll finish the young packet. <laughs> <laughs> Teach him to follow you down to the inn and help you track down that murderer. Right. I better get going while there's still some daylight. I'm going to wait right here for the answers to those wires. I'm not going to send in my daily report until you two get back. Well, I hope you're not being too optimistic. <laughs> not at all. I'm just as sure that you'll bring back the murderer as I am that King will stay here with me. Come on, King. Danny. Hello, Griff. Find out anything? Oh, nope, just having a look around. Even got the dog sleuth in her arm for you, eh? Ah, uh, boy, suspect anybody in particular? Let's figure it was a stranger. Nobody saw him. Say, let me look at that side entrance of yours. What's on your mind? He made a quick getaway. And if he'd have left his horse at the hitching post there, somebody would have been sure to have seen him either come or leave. So he'd have left his horse around here out of sight. Ran through that door and gotten away clean. When did it rain last, Griff? A couple of nights ago. Why? There's a chance I might find some footprints. Supposing you do. You couldn't arrest a horse. <laughs> How are you, Mac? Hello, Harry. Oh, Mr. Gridden. Have you got the key to the wine bin? Why, sure. And I'm keeping it, too. Go along. I'll open it for you. Excuse me, Mike. I hope you find something. I was right, boy. There are some hoof prints. And one shoe missing. Come on, boy, let's find them. into Portage Point to Elsie Barlow's barn. Stay there, King. Quiet.
I'll pick up that lantern. Well, now, what do you want? I'd like to see Miss Elsie. Well, she don't want to see none of you, see? So clear out. Up it. Why, the very sight of you gives me heartburn and brings on me arthritis. Who is it, Buffett? Oh, uh, it's Albert Norton. Ask him in. Inside you. Hello there, Mr. Barlow. Hello, Norton. What can I do for you? Me and my brother heard you'd arrived and thought you might want to sell the place. What makes you think we'd want to? It ain't paying anyway. Everybody knows that. We figured if you got a reasonable offer, you might be interested. I believe my niece made it perfectly clear that we're not interested. Now look here, Norton, you can tell your brother that I won't sell, and from now on this place will not be run at a loss. Hmm. You're no timber man. No, but I intend to be. You can also tell him that the day of timber stealing is over. What does that mean? Just a warning, that's all. Now listen, mister. It ain't safe to go around here threatening people. And you'll also find it isn't safe to go stealing timber. Now clear off and stay out of these premises. Thanks. Nice to have met you. Good night. Well, bold, sir. I couldn't have put it better myself. Coming from you, puppy, that is praise indeed. Thank you. Hi, sir. Ooh, what's the matter? Chub lights. Oh, the first of every August. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Well, then you'll send me out Bill Williams tomorrow. Well, I'm afraid it is necessary. Right, thank you. Huh? 
then through here we have a lot of small stuff that we cut in November and sell for Christmas tree. I see. Oh, hello, Ken. Hello, Sergeant. What brings you here? Good news, I hope. I'm afraid not. Mackenzie been here any time today? Well, not that I know of. Was he supposed to have been here? Have any of you been out in the barn lately? I was, before dinner. Right, what's the matter? Better get a lantern. Come on. When did it happen? He left the post less than an hour ago. What's the matter? Well, Al Norton was here about then. What did he want? First to try to get me to sell out. Of course, I refused. Then to threaten what would happen if I tried to run this place. Are you sure it was within the last hour? I'm positive it was less than that. He was here only a few minutes. If you'd listened to me, you'd have hung him yesterday. Now, all we've got to do is put the clamps on them and they'll come begging us to buy. Yeah, but when we do, it'll be for a lot less than you offered them. Hmm. Maybe. They might, tomorrow morning, take a crew over to Caribou Bend and shoot all you can downstream. See? You step over to Mahaffey's Pass and start a little fire. Oh, I don't mean anything serious, a real fire. I want a lot of smoke. Cover up Mike's work. Suppose the Mounties step into this. Leave that to me. Forget it. Go on. King, you wait here. What do you want this time? I want you, Norton. For what? I'm gonna hold you on suspicion of murder. Oh, go fly a kite. You got my alibi. Stafford! But you haven't got an alibi for the murder of Mackenzie an hour ago at the Barlow's. Mackenzie? Listen, you can't pin that on me. I'm gonna hold you for it. Not this week, you're not. Uh, what makes you think so? Come on. to go along, Martha? No, thank you. I won't feel safe till I'm sure Albert Norton is out of the way. Oh, I'm sure he is by now. There's nothing to worry about. Sergeant Strain strikes me as being a very efficient fellow. <laughs> He's one of the finest fellows on the force. Well, I've known him a long time. There, you see. Sergeant Strain, did you Oh, sure, Mr. Martin. Good morning, Ken. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thanks. Want you sit down? Hello, Sergeant. We're just talking about you. Have some coffee. It's the best I've ever tasted. Thank you, sir. Oh, you don't have to sell me Maggie's coffee. I've been drinking it for years. <laughs> now I know why you North Americans can never be converted to tea. And I know why you Englishmen drink tea. I've tasted your coffee. <laughs> oh, Ken, what about Norton? Did you get him? Uh, yes, last night. Right in keeping with your best traditions, eh, Sergeant? Well, I'm a little the worse for wear, but... Uh-oh. What's the matter, Ken? I left those affidavits at the detachment. What affidavit? I want you all to give me a deposition to the effect that Albert Norton was here last night between 9.20 and 9.35. Well, of course we will. Well, certainly, any time you like. <laughs> Miss Elsie, Miss Elsie! Oh, what is it? You look like you're going to a fire. That's no joke. Look! Where is it? It's over at Mahathi Pass. Mr. Barlow, you and Puffy go down to the bunkhouse and get the men. Elsie now, get right after it. Barlow, you get the men out as quick as you can. Hurry, Herbert, hurry. Puffy, you need to go to the stables and get the horses. All right, half a mo, wait for me, Governor. Come on, boys, get the sack. What is it, Ken? Smoke pot, huh? Just another one of those Norton trains. 
tricks. Wasn't me, Miss Barrow. Who done it? Fire's a gag, boys. Meant to pull you away from your work. What for? Timber wolves are at it again. Scour the Barlow lands, and you'll probably find them. If you do, bring them back to the house. Elsie, we better go back. All right, All right boys, stamp these out. These out, boys, quick. Well, our fire wasn't dangerous, but it's bad enough to come under our forest fire log. all right? You're not hurt? No, but it was awfully close. wonder which one of us that was meant for. Probably for both of us. We'd better get back. Yeah. Help. Yes, Ken. You better stay pretty close to home for the next few days. Don't worry. After today's experience, I won't stray very far. Look, Puppy. Well, what's the good news, Puppy? There ain't none. The blighter saw us coming and beat us to it. They must have better horses than we have. But I bet you my gallstones it was the Nortons. I know it was the Nortons. Oh, I haven't had such a pain like this since my appendix was taken out. Look, it's <laughs> Uncle. He looks like he's hurt. What oh. happened? Yes, I got a bullet from the arm from You're someone. You know who's getting shot? No, oh, no. let's get him inside. Maybe. Maybe. Then what happened? I heard only one shot and fell from my horse. I suppose whoever did the shooting thought he'd got me. You're lucky to have got off so light, Governor. If it'd been me, I'd been got right through the eyes. There's no bullet that small. No. Oh, dear, when will all this killing and shooting end? That's what I'd like to know. Sergeant, isn't it about time this business was stopped? Well, I'm doing everything I can. I'm sorry. Well, even Elsie and Sergeant Strange were shot at today. What? When did this happen? Well, right after we found out that the fire was just another trick. Sergeant, this is outrageous. These Nortons are a lot of bandits, assassins. And unless you can assure me that they will be severely dealt with, I should be compelled to appeal to your headquarters. Well, I hope that won't be necessary. I'd like you and Mrs. Barlow to drop into the detachment after you leave the doctors. I've got those affidavits for you to sign. I'll be there. Mr. Hayes is here to see you, Mr. Barlow. Mr. Hayes? That's the man I told you about from the Laramore Lumber Company. Oh, yes. Better go in the other room. Oh, clear all this stuff away. And please don't anybody mention the shooting. Sergeant, would you mind helping me on with my coat? Oh, I'd be glad to. Now ask him in. Would you come this way? How do you do, Miss Barlow? How do you do? Mr. Barlow? Sorry. How do you do? If you'll excuse me, I think I'll run along. Don't forget our date. I won't forget. I'll go with you. I hope I'm not intruding, Mr. Barlow. Not at all, Mr. Hayes. But if it's about selling out, I'm afraid you're wasting your time. I've made up my mind that the Barlow lands will stay in the family and will be run by the Barlows. That sounds pretty determined. Well, that's the way I feel. But you've got to do it for me. It's important. But, Ken, I don't understand. You don't have to understand. Just do it for me, and I'll explain later. Well, all right, if you insist. Fine. And get it to me tonight during the card game. Yes, but I don't see why I... I hope I'll be able to manage you a little better after we're married. Well, you won't, because I'm always going to want to know why. That's why enough for now. See you later. Good day, Miss Barlow. Good day. This is my last warning, Norton. You've got no grounds to accuse me. I'm not responsible for everything that happens around here. You can't prove a thing. If anything else happens to any one of the Barlows, I'll throw the whole lot of you in jail. Speaking of jails, how long are you going to hold Albert? Till he comes up for trial. You know, Strange, you're not a bad guy. I'd hate to see anything happen to you. It's not a threat by any chance. Well, you figure that out for yourself. I will. I'm pretty good at that sort of thing. Well, there you are. Yeah, thank you. And now, Mrs. Barlow, I'll get Elsie's and Puffy's depositions when they come over in the morning. That's going to take care of one of the Nortons. I certainly hope so. Thank you. A little more tea, Mr. Barlow. No, thank you. Mrs. Barlow? No, thank you. Oh, here's to happier days. <laughs> I have a feeling they're not very far off. 
you still feel that you need King, Sergeant? Oh, I most certainly do. King's my jailer until Williams gets here. Williams? Uh, yes, I've taken your advice and sent for a new man. Well, I'm glad. Well, Sergeant, please forgive my little outburst this afternoon, but you know, after all this shooting... Oh, naturally. Forget it. Well, we must be going. I hear you're having dinner with us tonight. That's right. Elsie invited me. Well, why not come along now? I'd better wait until my new man gets here, but I'll be there by 7. I'll see you until dinner, then. Goodbye. Goodbye. What's the matter, Puffy? Doesn't your dinner agree with you? It never does, and your lead didn't help it any. A Sims man, no doubt. No, 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 nothing like that. That should take your last trump. It does. There's the setting trick. Uh-oh, my fault. What a lovely assist you gave me, partner. Why, you could have made it if you'd played your losing diamond on the art. Yeah, but what would I have done with the last club in a dummy? Swallowed it. <laughs> that reminds me, I clean forgot me baking soda. There should be a set of blinders for kibitzers. Puffy, since you're in disgrace, bring some port and some glasses. Right, sir. All right, all right. I'll get it. Hello, hello. Let's get on with the rubber. It's for you, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Excuse me. All right, he's a coming now. Thank you, Puffy. Yeah, hello. Yeah, Griff, what do you know? Oh, uh, Sergeant, Sergeant. Uh, they must have broken out. I saw him and Bart, as plain as day. Right in past here, about five minutes ago. Well, you did, eh? Well, thanks, Griff. I'll get right after it. Yeah, right. You better get Puffy to take my hand. Anything serious? Al Norton broke jail. What did you uh -huh. say? King was in the jail. Did anything happen to him? No, no, I got King outside. He's all right. One of these fine nights, we'll all be murdered in our beds. Do you think he might come here? Oh, of course not. He's probably miles away by this time. Well, he won't get far, I can tell you that. Good night, Elsie. Good night, Tim. Bye. Good night. Come on, come on, Bart. We can't stay here all night. We're safer here than any other place. Oh, yeah? This is one place you wouldn't think of looking for us. How much money do you want? All of it. We get a payroll to meet tomorrow. Yeah, and I've got a neck I don't want stretched tomorrow. So what? All right. Let's go. Now we'll call in with the Barlows. The Barlows? Why, you're crazy. Maybe I am. But we'll stop there just the same. All right. Let's get going. Now, we just got in, eh? Well, then he must be coming by way of Piccadilly Circus. There, yeah, right. It's only a matter of minutes now, Williams. Messenger ought to be here any minute. What do you want me to do? I want you to pick up the Norton boys. You know them, don't you? Yes, sir. They're quite an armful. I can handle them. Good luck, Williams. Thanks, Sergeant. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Isn't it a kind of late to be starting out? Hadn't you better wait till morning? No. I've done all the good I can for myself up here. And if I hustle, I can still make the last train out of Portage Point. Well, you know your own business best. Call back and see us again. Right, I will. Goodbye. Good night, sir. Sergeant, hope it's good news. Ah, it is. Couldn't be better. Anything else, sir? No, nope, that's all. Come on, King. Come on, boy.
Peggy? Who is it? Go get him. somebody moving and I screamed and then he grabbed my throat. Who was it? I don't know. Where's Mr. Barlow? He's downstairs searching the house. Sergeant! Sergeant! Come down here. Maggie, you take care of her and don't let that dog out of the room. Stop! Yes, sir. Oh, Maggie. Someone down in the cellar. Is there any other door out of there? There's a door outside. I lock it. There he is. Come on out of there. Come on out of there. Oh, so it's you. What have you got there? That's my medicine. That's what it is. My medicine. Stealing liquor again, huh? It is not stealing. This is my property, and all that's on it belongs to me. It ain't stealing to take what's your own. What was that? Here, take that. Come on, you fellas, get in there. Now it's you, huh? What happened? Just want to have with these birds. Try to get away. Inside. You can't hold us for these murders. I tell you, we didn't do them. No? There are enough other charges against you two guys to keep you in jail for years. Sergeant, if it was me, I'd hang them first and argue later. Why would we kill Druid? Oh, Mackenzie, either. What did we get out of it? Well, you might get control of the Barlow land. You've been trying to long enough. We'd still have to do business with Elsie. And it's likely you tried to do her in only a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah? Well, <laughs> that's one rap you can't hang on us. Mr. Barlow. Are you positive the cellar door was bolted when you went downstairs? I'm sure of it. I heard a noise, listened, quietly slid the bolt, opened the door and called to you. I always bolt it before I turn in, Sergeant. Well, that eliminates Freddy. He couldn't have gotten upstairs if he'd wanted to. It appears to me that the same person's responsible for all the crimes. Definitely. And if Mackenzie had lived a few more hours, he'd have brought in the man who killed Bob Druid. You mean that Mackenzie had found the murderer? Exactly. When he left me that afternoon, he went down to the inn to talk to Griffin. Then he went to Portage Point. He was trailing somebody. I know just how Mac worked. That trail ended in your barn out there. I see. Then he must have come face to face with the murderer. Right. They fought, he got the better of Mackenzie and killed him to keep from being taken. And all that was happening while we were right here in this room. But the murderer made two mistakes. He didn't know that Mac had the dog with him, and he neglected to clean one fingerprint off the hammer. Were you able to trace the fingerprint? Yes. Today I found another one that matched it. Oh, Puffy. Go upstairs, get the dog, bring him down, and hold him right there in the hall until I want him. Come on, go. Oh, Mrs. Barlow, I'd like to ask you a question. Of course, Sergeant. What is it? Weren't you in love with Bob Druid? What are you driving at, Strange? You can't implicate Mrs. Barlow in this. Don't forget we didn't arrive until the morning after the murder was committed. No, but when you did arrive, 
You told us the Druid came on ahead and left you and Mrs. Barlow behind. But I... You neglected to tell us that the three of you left Vancouver together. At Portage Point, Mrs. Barlow claimed she was tired. And you two dropped out there while he came on ahead. Then you followed him to the inn and you killed him. You went back, got Mrs. Barlow and came on the next day. You're out of your mind. Why should I kill Bob Druid? What possible motive? Two motives. Love and money. You tried to kill Elsie tonight, so the entire estate would come to you, and then you would have run off with Mrs. Barlow. Nobody would have known that you had killed her husband. Because you're not Barlow. You're Robert Druid. I arrest you, Robert Druid, for the murder of your employer, Herbert Barlow, and you, Mrs. Barlow, as an accomplice. You're making an awful mistake, Strange. You can't prove one word you've said. Oh, yes, I can. I had that passport taken out of the trunk. That passport's all right. How dare but, but Ken, his picture's on it. Sure, his picture's on it. But it's pasted right over the picture of your uncle. A magnifying glass shows the seal marks don't match. And these photographs, one is of the thumbprint on the hammer, and the other one is of the thumbprint on the teacup. For further proof, I've got the dog. He was locked up upstairs to hold the scent of the man who came into Elsie's room tonight. <laughs> now why he didn't want the body shipped back to England. And why the dog made a great fuss over Mrs. Barlow, but paid no attention to you. Why, you would have hung both murders on the Nortons. The only thing that puzzles me is why, when you shot yourself in the arm, you weren't more careful to conceal the powder burns on the sleeve. Blimey, that's good work, Sergeant. I couldn't have done better myself. All right, Williams, take him down and start warming up the jail. Hey, wait a minute, what do you guys think you're doing? Get Come on. Now, get your hands up, all of you. Up or I'll shoot. All right, hold them. I'll get the horses ready. Then I'll call you. Come on, you. There you go, Bill. Go on, get out of here. Go on, now get him out, Bob. Why, I'll blow your pension heads off. And I'll do it, too. Up there, Druid. And what are you doing, puppy? Oh, uh, I just came out to see what was happening. Oh, sorry. All right, Sergeant, let's go. Hey, now, wait a minute. There's only one point I want to get cleared up. The night of the Druid murder, you two were in the bar. You sent the bartender, Harry, down in the basement to get him out of the way. Why? You might have done the killing if something hadn't frightened you off, and I want to know what it was. Well, we wanted to talk to the guy and scare him away. We went to the dining room, but somebody else came in. This guy looks up and says, what are you doing here? Did you see who it was? No. Whoever it was closed the dining room door, so we beat it. Well, why didn't you tell all that at the inquest? We didn't want to get mixed up in it. You wouldn't have believed us anyway. All right, Williams, take him down. Here's the rest of this barrel. Quite an increase, huh? Oh, that's even better than I hoped. Get the cut stuff down to the mill as fast as you can. Oh, you better put on some more men, Hal. Right on, Miss Barlow. That's the spirit. And the lovely part about it is the Nortons can't pinch a single stick of it. At least not for two years. Hal, did you hear what happened to the druid bloke? Yes, he deserves it. Definitely. You know, hanging's a pretty serious sentence. Oh, puppy. Well, so long, Miss Barlow. Goodbye, Hal. Oh, sorry. Hello, Hal. Hello, Ken. Maggie told me I'd find you here. 
Oh, puppy. Uh, Maggie said, I know. I can take a hint, Sergeant. You haven't got to eat me across the head. <laughs> well, stop looking so pleased with yourself and tell me. Came today. And? Well, you read it. <laughs> Commanding Officer Edmonton. The application of Sergeant Strange to Mary Elsie Barlow is here with approved. Approved? <laughs> <laughs> 